Um, I'll refer you to a, re a website at the end of this. Um, for batteries, I'm just using plain lead acid batteries in this. Um, these are uh, group 31 batteries, which simply refers uh, mostly just to their size, that they're about 13 inches long and about seven inches wide or so. And these are all used batteries. I actually, I knew a guy who had a, a number of batteries uh, uh, out of some equipment that they were, they worked fine, but they were used. You know, they're, they're not going to be quite as good as brand new ones. But, you know, he couldn't sell them as used. And the only other thing he could do is take them in for a core charge, which is lead acid batteries are, are very, very highly recycled. If you go somewhere and you want to buy a new car battery, they say, great, where's your old one? And if you don't bring in your old one, they charge you more money. So it's a, it's a great way to encourage uh, people to recycle. So for my little recycling project, I just use these used batteries. And originally, I just had them in the cargo area. And they're actually mounted on a bed frame. Um, large garbage pickup day one week. Um, somebody had a, a bed frame that was just going to go in the garbage. They saw garbage, and I saw electric car battery rack. And I, I, you know, I should have looked for it, but I actually, I have a close-up of this, which is kind of funny because I didn't take the wheels off the bed frame before I mounted it in there. So you see six batteries across the back and then a wheel sticking up because, you know, that's what was on, on the bed originally. Uh, these are deep cycle sealed lead acid batteries. Um, these are sealed as opposed to flooded batteries. Flooded batteries are what are used for golf carts most of the time. That's the style of battery where there's a cap you can pop off and you have to add a little water in there every once in a while, which are great batteries. Um, more than anything, it's just that these batteries were available and cheap. And that's you know, more than anything what I was looking for. But also, since they're sealed, uh, it opens up other possibilities. Like you can mount sealed batteries sideways, for example. So if you had some unusual configuration, um, sealed batteries can be uh, beneficial. Generally, they cost more. In this case, they were substantially less expensive. But like I said, I really just needed a car for going to the grocery store and you know doing regular stuff. And after a while, I thought, you know, I don't like the batteries in the back. I don't have a trunk anymore. You know, yeah, I can put groceries in the back seat. I'd really rather have them in the trunk. What I didn't need was a back seat because it was just my wife and I. So I got out my uh, my Craftsman battery-operated reciprocating saw, and I took out the the cushion of the back seat put the saw through the back, and cut a hole in the floor. Now, of course, the only reason I can do this is because I had already taken off the gas tank. In most cars, this is where the gas tank is, is right under the back seat. Um, instead, um, all that's really down there is I've got one gray pipe. This is uh, just a two-inch PVC gray pipe, and that connects from up under the hood to the back of the car, and the main power cables for the car run through that. So they're under the car, but they're protected from the weather and road debris and everything like that. And keep in mind, I don't have an exhaust system on here anymore either. So that nice little shape in the middle of the car where the exhaust system and all that sort of thing ran, instead I could have that pipe up under there. And it's, uh, all the cables are neatly protected and away from anything <coughs> metallic. Um, again, you know, once there's a hole in the car, I got to stick my head through it and <laughs> have a good laugh. Um, but essentially, um, I went over to my friend's house. Um, you know, like I said, I'm, I, I don't have a welder. I don't have specialty tools, nothing like that. But a friend of mine had a welder. Uh, we took an old equipment box, uh, just kind of a metal box, cut it down to fit, and welded it in place. So now all the batteries sit in this box, basically where the gas tank was. And instead of having a back seat, I now have a battery compartment. Uh, it's just a different photo. Um, that's the, the finished back seat. It's not a back seat anymore. Um, it's the original uh, seat back. Most little hatchback cars, the seat folds forward so for carrying more cargo. And then the bottom of it is just uh, it's ply plywood with some recycled carpet over the top. Here's a little, little bit different angle. And then, of course, now my uh, cargo area is completely unmodified. So now I've got a nice little two-seater car. I can still throw tools and things on the back seat. And I have all the room I need in the back for groceries and whatever, whatever else I need to do. I don't know if you were watching some of the photos that I was running beforehand. I have the one photograph of uh, my annual bonfire where I go get scrap wood. And I had like 12-foot planks sticking out of the back of the car. And uh, the bonfire is actually over on my parents' property. 
and uh, after I dropped all the wood off, it's, um, it's a big hill back there. It's about that steep. And that's the only time I've ever had to use first gear in this, in this car. It just climbed straight up the hill like you, like you wouldn't believe. Um, now, to recharge the car, you need some place to plug in an electric cable, just a regular extension cord. So since I don't have a gas tank anymore, my gas cap really doesn't do anything. I went over to the, uh, the boat store, and I got one of these waterproof uh, power connections for a bass boat for recharging the, uh, the battery on there. And I installed that where the gas cap was. Uh, so now all I have to do is plug an extension cord in right there, and then that runs to the inside. And I have a battery charger that's installed in the spare tire well. I use that space for mounting uh, uh, the battery charger and a couple other things. And the battery charger is really nothing fancy at all. Battery chargers basically are just big, ugly black boxes with power in on one side, power out on the other. And then you connect uh, the red wire to the positive end of the battery pack and the black wire to the negative end of the battery pack. Um, now, this is a 72-volt charger, so it's designed to charge six batteries in a row in series. Uh, the downside to this is, let's say I wanted to add one more battery to my car, make it go just a little faster. This battery charger wouldn't work for me anymore. So another approach is to have one battery, uh, one charger for each battery. But if you do that, you need it to be some sort of an automatic charger that um, you don't have to press a start button on it or anything like that. So when you plug the car in, all the batteries start charging. Uh, here's my friend Tom. That's the back seat of his car. He's got a Dodge Neon with 27 batteries in it. Now, remember how, how I said, OK, I'm not an engineer. I don't have a background in any of this. He's an engineer. Uh, I, I don't know if it shows or not in the photograph, but um, essentially those kind of cheese grater looking things are um, almost a modified computer power supply. And he actually measured it out so that um, each individual battery has its own charger right on top. There's a little piece of plexiglass and threaded rod. It's, it's gorgeous. It's got, guy does a great job. I mean, he's really, really very detail-oriented. And he's been working on his car for years. And I've been driving my car for years <laughs> while working on it. I mean, I hop in my car. And uh, actually, that's how I got my speeding ticket.